What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So this tip is a question that was asked in one of our SketchUp Essentials community calls. So the SketchUp Essentials community is my community where you can learn SketchUp both through training but also through calling in and asking questions. So we have member calls where you can get on and ask your SketchUp questions so that you can make sure that you don't get stuck and that you're getting the SketchUp help that you need. Um, if you want to check that that out, you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash community. Now this week's question was what are some tips for placing objects on the ground so that they're not running through the ground or anything like that? So like if you try to place a table and the table legs are down below the ground, what are some easy ways to align things with the ground? So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so these awesome models are 3D warehouse models that I've downloaded from user Sun. So if you want to download these and follow along, you can do that in the 3D warehouse. But I wanted to give you a few tips for dropping objects to the ground inside of SketchUp. So the first tip is going to be probably your most important tip, and that's going to be to use inference locking with the shift key. And so the way that you can do that is let's say you wanted to put this chair on the ground right? Well, one way to do that is to use the move tool. So if we were to tap the M key and then set a base point right here and then single click, we can set this on the ground, right? However, notice how this is kind of like jumping around and it can be a little bit tricky to make sure that this is going where you want it to go. My number one tip on this is whenever you're trying to drop something to the ground, move your mouse until you get this little lock or you get this little blue dotted line. Then hold the shift key in order to lock your object to that axis, just like this. So if we lock our object to that axis, you can see how we can move our mouse and we can click in order to place that. So by holding the shift key, you can lock to the blue axis and that's gonna allow you to just move things up or down without having to worry about anything else. All right, so tip number two is if you don't want to use the inference locking like that, the other thing you can do is you can use the keyboard inference locking. So with keyboard inference locking, what you can do is you can start your move and then you can tap one of the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if I was to tap the up arrow key, that's gonna lock that to this blue axis. And that means that no matter where I move my mouse, I am locked to the blue axis. I don't have to hold the shift key down or anything like that. And so what I can do is I can use this to align with an object just like this. So by tapping the up arrow key, you can lock to the blue axis and move things just up or down. That also works with your left or right arrow keys. So I could use this to align to those axes as well. So that's tip number two is use arrow key inference locking by tapping the up arrow key. All right, so tip number three is gonna be to pick a smart base point. And so what I mean by picking a smart base point is if you want to move your object so that it aligns with the ground, you wanna make sure that you've selected a base point that's actually on the bottom of your object, right? Because if you're using the move tool in order to try to place these, and I'm gonna go ahead and align them real quick. So I'm gonna move this along this axis and along this axis, but if we're trying to move this down to be on the ground, right, we don't wanna set our base point in the middle of the object. Because if we set our base point in the middle of the object, then we're just guessing, right? Like we're just kinda of trying to guess where things are gonna be aligned with the ground right here. So even if I use this inference locking, there's no like, this won't lock to the ground and place your object on the ground because we didn't set a good base point. However, if we set our base point on the bottom of the object, like this, so if I click right here and then move my mouse and hold the shift key, now I can move my mouse over this plane and it's gonna drop this so that it's aligned with the ground. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick a base point that's actually on the bottom of your object and use that to align with this plane. All right, so the next tip is remember that your inference point doesn't have to be where your object is. So what that means is that means if I move this up, right, off the ground. Um, let's say that I want to align this with a plane. 
Well, I don't have to align this with a point that's right below my object, right? So if I pick like this point right here and I move my mouse down, I don't have to find something directly below my object. Um, as long as I'm locked to this blue axis, I can move my mouse over anything on this plane in order to place this. So notice how if I move my mouse anywhere on this plane, as long as I set a proper base point on my object, I can use that to inference um, my placement inside of my model. So what that means is that means it might be easier for for you if your object is like way up here and you want to put it on the ground we want to pick a smart base point with the move tool but then I can lock to this axis and then I can move my mouse over anything so I can move my mouse over this point right here and click and this will place this on the ground so your inference point doesn't need to be directly below your object it can be anywhere that's on the level that you want as long as you're using your inference locking all right, so the next tip is sometimes you get an object like this one that's a little bit tricky, right? So let's say we had a bowl that we wanted to place on our plate or on our table. And so I'm gonna move this so that it's aligned with my table real quick. So I'm just gonna move it over. Then I'm gonna move it across. And it's already a bit too low, so we're gonna move it up a little bit. So. Let's say that I wanted to align this with the bottom of my table. Well, right now, what I'm doing is I'm moving my mouse over this and I'm kind of guessing as to where the inference point is on the very bottom of my object, right? Like I can't see where that is. And so that makes it really hard because if I pick the wrong point and move this down, well, notice how my table is actually showing through my bowl. And we don't really want that. And so what we can do to avoid that is we can actually use hidden geometry in order to see where our inference point is. So the way that we can do that is we can do a view and we can turn on hidden geometry. So if we turn on hidden geometry, notice how now for all of my objects, I can see all of the geometry that makes up these objects. Well, when I do that, I can find the very bottom point of this bowl right here. So then I'll just find my straight up and down I'll hold shift and then I'll move my mouse over this face. Well now, what that allowed me to do is that allowed me to place the very bottom point of my object on this face right here. So by turning on hidden geometry, you can find that inference point or that base point a lot easier that you can then use to move your object to align it. So another tip, depending on how you're doing this, is you can also check if things are aligned by using a front view. And so we can go to the front view just by clicking on front inside of our scenes toolbar or our views toolbar. So if we click on the front view, we can see how this is aligned, but notice how this gets a little bit tricky because these are all in perspective mode, right? So these all go to a vanishing point. Well, what we can do is we can turn on parallel projection like this. And so when we turn on parallel projection, what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna be able to see this in a straight on view. This is what we use to create elevations and also floor plans, but we can also use this to see if things are actually aligned with our ground. So for example, you can see that these objects right here are a little bit below the ground. So we can zoom in and then we can just move this up. And it's really easy to do because we're in this front on view. And then we can just find a point like this one to make sure that it's aligned. So we could do the same thing with our chair right here. We could find the bottom point of this. This is a little bit weird because this wasn't modeled with the, uh, with the actual chair legs being flat. So you're never gonna get these perfect, but they're gonna be pretty close. But notice how we can get these so that we can tell for sure that they're aligned with the bottom of our object just by doing this. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. So if you are interested in getting a little bit more um, personalized help as well as some training on SketchUp, make sure to check out the new SketchUp Essentials community. You can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash community where you can get on those coaching calls and get answers to your SketchUp questions. So make sure to check that out. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.